Okay. Um, hi. Welcome to uh, the Go Start workshop. Um, can you hear me behind there? Okay. Um, anyone who doesn't understand German? Okay, yeah. Then we'll stick to English. Okay, so yeah, this is about uh, Go Start, which is a high level web framework for Google's new programming language Go. Um, I started about, oh, just uh, hands up, uh, who has uh, ever used Go? Okay, one. Who has had a look what Go does, how it works? Okay, few. So, um, yeah, for, for the other ones, a brief introduction to Go. So Go is a systems um, programming language from, from Google, um, developed about, or development started about three years ago. And um, it is now uh, at version 1.0, and it is uh, yeah, used by Google, SoundCloud, um, uh, for some Ubuntu projects. And yeah, so you can read more and more stories about Silicon Valley startups using Go on Hacker News. So it seems to get some traction. And um, what are the basics of Go? So it's a C-like language. It's a compiled, uh, strongly typed language. Um, in fact, it's much stronger typed than C or C++. Um, which is a real uh, advantage. Um, there are no, really no implicit um, type conver conversions in Go. Um, everything is very explicit. And um, even it's a um, fairly lower level language, C-like language, it has some high level features which make, make it very productive. Uh, kind of like script uh, languages, so uh, I think the most famous features are channels, so uh, if you do asynchronous uh, and parallel programming, um, the whole uh, synchronization is done uh, via channels, and um, those channels are native uh, language constructs, and um, yeah, you can do pretty pretty advanced stuff with it, um, even passing channels on channels, so yeah, you could do a lot of brain fuck with that. Um, and another major distinction to C, C++ is that uh, Go doesn't use the traditional um, polymorphic object-oriented um, uh, object programming, so um, what you have in Go is a composition of structs and interfaces. And uh, interfaces are also uh, implemented in a different way than um, the usual, say, C++, uh, C Sharp interfaces. Um, basically, an interface in uh, Go, or le let's put it another way, um, it's, it's kind of uh, like duck typing in that um, every uh, type that supports all the methods of an interface also implements um, the interface but uh, it does it doesn't have to know that it implements this interface because um, uh, the interface is created as an adapter from the compiler when it sees that uh, this object is accessed as uh, this uh, interface type. So usually in C++ you have virtual function tables and uh, your names of uh, the methods are translated into uh, indices into this uh, table and the object itself provides this table and all you need um, to access this object as, uh, as uh, like this interface is um, you have to get a pointer to this table, and this table is implemented by the object in Go. Um, this table um, is created as an adapter, and the object itself doesn't have to know the interfaces it implements, which makes it um, very, uh, 
yeah, let's say dynamic. So it's kind of like duct typing because um, you just use the names of, of the methods, but it's all strongly typed. And that's a, a feature especially um, yeah, useful for really large projects because um, you can implement new interfaces or uh, access an object that looks like that interface um, without having to uh, refactor your complete code base to implement an interface. So uh, what else about Go? Yeah, it, it has um, a garbage collector, so um, you don't have to free anything like in C, C++. Um, one word of caution, this uh, garbage collection system that Go is using only works well in uh, 64 bits um, because it has a, a fairly interesting um, algorithm to detect if something is a pointer uh, or not. So it uses a specific memory range where um, all the allocated memory is placed in virtual mem memory and um, it, it simply detects uh, pointers to a valid memory uh, area by looking at uh, the integer values and that works for 64 bits because 64 bits the your address base is really large and the proba probability that uh, any integer points just into those uh, few gigabytes of virtual memory you're using for uh, the heap is really low and if you don't free that one pointer nothing really happens um, pr uh, this approach is um, problematic for uh, 32 bits because there you don't have such a big address space so you often have uh, integers pointing to your um, memory area and those integer, uh, integers uh, won't get freed so um, basically with the current garbage collection don't use go on 32 bits so um, we had our web server um, for startup live uh, which is the first project that used Ghost, the Ghost framework, uh, running on a 32-bit server, and it crashed after about every hour, every two hours or something, when we got some traffic. Okay, um, that's so far the introduction to Go. Um, now to Go start. So yeah, the goal was to create a high-level web framework um, like. Uh, Django is for Python or Ruby is for Rails. Uh, it should be very Go-ish because um, yeah, Go does a few things in a very special way. Um, don't make stuff t uh, more complicated than it has to be. Um, convention over configuration and easy to se <coughs> easy setup and deployment for the goals. So it's currently in development for over a year. I've been working on that full time for most of that time. Um, I've been working for Start Europe, uh, where we developed the Startup Life uh, .in website on that. Um, so um, yeah, I was able to uh, work on the framework work there and uh, on the website as first application. So this is kind of sponsored by Start Europe. This work and. Yeah, so what's in it? The typical uh, model view controller stuff you probably all know about. Um, one design decision is to use Go syntax instead of template languages. Um, the rationale behind that is that um, if you're using a template language, um, you're kind of learning another programming language just to use the system that is created in another language and also um, templates, text templates are not uh, strongly typed or they're not typed at all and um, Go is very good in uh, doing really everything uh, strongly typed and um, what I'm doing with uh, GoStart is create the HTML structure um, the DOM of, of a page of a page uh, with Go syntax. 
So that doesn't mean um, like in BHP you have uh, mixed uh, markup and mixed code and printf and that and that. It's really um, every element in the DOM is uh, represented by uh, a Go object. Uh, it has HTML5 boilerplate out of the box. The default uh, database is MongoDB and yeah, all batteries include. So, yeah, one nice, really nice feature of uh, Go is um, the go get command um, with which you can uh, basically download um, projects from every um, popular um, open source uh, version control system. So all you do is go get and then uh, this part of uh, the repository path and the U is for update. And it really um, fetches all dependencies because um, in GoStart you can also use um, this path as your import path. So um, the go get command looks into the source files, sees um, this import path, and then knows where to download all the dependencies. Okay, so. Let's start with uh, views. So yeah, as told before, why learn another <coughs> template language if you can use Go syntax, one-to-one -one, uh, DOM tree representation. And um, also one of the ideas behind that design was um, to be able to do um, a real-time representation of the website uh, that the user has in his browser or on the server and then do uh, syncing between uh, server and client. This isn't implemented yet, but was one of the ideas and the reasons why I choose this design. Um, there are some high level abstractions. Um, so for list, table, form, um, model, menu, all this stuff. Um, there are objects you can use uh, which make things easier <coughs> and then there are the HTML tags um, which are pretty much uh, yeah, exactly in Go what you would use in HTML text. So how does it look like? So this is a typical view. So you can see there is a uh, div with a class uh, h1 pp, um, an unordered list, and of course you, you still can use templates, so this shows how to in, uh, use a template. And yeah, so I use templates pretty much only for the HTML5 uh, boilerplate for uh, the page and everything else is uh, Go structs. So of course you have to uh, render dynamic stuff. So there's a dynamic view that uh, gets a context object and then uh, returns a view and an error. So here's one feature of Go. Um, you have multiple return values and um, usually um, if there might be any error in your function you return the error as um, last result value. There is no try catch in Go and um, this, is, this is a deliberate uh, design decision because that way you always have uh, to return your errors uh, explicitly as result and uh, not have any exceptions that pop up from uh, from, pla from places where you don't know where they're coming from. Okay, I think that's too much content for now. Um, yeah, basically, like any web framework, you, ha you have to define your structure of um, the paths or the URLs. Um, 
in GoStart you create a function and uh, return a view path object and um, basically yeah you see here the view it's the CSS and the name style CSS and that's how you define uh, the structure of your URLs. Okay, um, yeah, another part, so um, we have spoken about views now for the models. Um, models are simple Go structs. Um, marshalling is done via reflection, which is a standard design pattern in Go, so if you uh, writing anything, uh, say in XML, JSON, um, or have it uh, transferred from the data bank, uh, database, uh, you're using uh, reflection to set the values of the model. Um, yeah, there's another feature um, for structs. Let's see, do you have a model? Oh no, don't have a model here. Okay, we, we will see that later in more detail about um, the models. Um, so, how's the pizza doing? Does anybody know? Because um, we're waiting for pizza and um, in theory it should be uh, coming sometime soon and yeah. so the idea is to give you <laughs> ah no pizza <coughs> yeah so the idea was to give you uh, now a short introduction then uh, eat something and after that we go into the workshop part where we uh, create an application um, Okay, let's see what we can do while we're waiting for the pizza. There's a question. Yeah. Uh, so, why should I use um, GoStart? Besides, I want to um, use a web framework based on Go. Is there another USB? Oh, the reason is it's a high-level web framework, so it does a lot of stuff for you. Okay, uh, what if does it better than other web frameworks? There's no other high-level web framework like that. Okay. So it's simply the first one of that kind. There are um, several low-level web frameworks. So Go has uh, the basic um, HTTP stuff, uh, running a server and all that included in the standard libraries. Uh, you so mean the, the first high-level for the language go. For the language go, okay. yeah. And there are several uh, low-level frameworks that just do some more utility stuff for you, and that's a high-level web framework that has everything from uh, user login, um, admin pages, and all this stuff. Yeah, but I was asking um, with the scope of all web frameworks. Uh, with the scope of all web frameworks. Maybe it's uh, it's Microsoft MVC technology. It seems a little bit similar to that. Or oh, well, the, Java Enterprise the MVC um, design pattern is something that's used all so over the place. The ASP.NET MVC um, library, which uh, Microsoft uh, currently used in MVC form. So, so I, 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 I don't have any clue about um, Microsoft technologies, so I can't answer. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I've, I've worked before with uh, Django and um, I haven't used uh, Ruby on Rails, but the design principles are always the same, um, except that I'm not using templates. Okay, so the main point is um, if you want to go with Go. If you want to go with Go, go with Go, start, start with Go, start. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Sorry? It's compatible with the Google Apps App Engine. Um, it should be com compatible. Um, I haven't tested it yet. 
So where do you deploy uh, the Ghost Stars application? Um, a simple uh, Linux server, command line, all, all you need. There's, there's no platform as a service uh, as it now supports Go. So the supported platforms are Linux or all Unixes, um, Mac OS, uh, Windows. But platform as a service such as Heroku or. Oh, yeah, for Heroku there's um, uh, one, how is it called it, Heroku? You know, recipe, whatever. To yeah, it's pretty pretty easy to include um, uh, Go projects in Heroku because in Heroku you're just starting a process with a defined environment, and you define your environment. You need your Go your Go um, environment, and that's it. More questions? Okay, um, yeah, then let's get into the tutorial. Um, who has um, Go installed? Okay, four of you. Who wants to install it? <laughs> One other guy? Okay, so um, yeah, I'll just go into um, the tutorial that's um, available online. So in the GitHub GitHub project, and uh, uh, examples the full tutorial thing. Um, yeah, here here you can see how to install um, a Go project. So it's really easy. Go get, and after that. Um, Go install that same path, and after that you have an ex executable um, with the name of the project, and uh, with that, and you're launching that if the previous command was successful. Okay, so. Um, yeah, just jump right into it. So, um, what you have to do is um, load the configuration. So now you don't have to load the configuration. You can load the configuration um, from a JSON file, which uh, initializes um, all the packages uh, here. So you see um, email. Um, that's a wrap around the standard email um, library from uh, Google and uh, has a pretty uh, easy implementation or wrap up for um, Google Mail. Um, yeah, we're using Mongo. Um, GoStart also has uh, a media, uh, media library. So what you can do is uh, upload images, upload files. Um, you can create an admin interface uh, where you can uh, modify and, and uh, manage those files. And it's large enough. Yeah, so we haven't talked much about the model part, so what you see here is uh, a model. Um, you create uh, a struct for a model. Um, this particular struct here um, uses composition with a uh, user user, so that's um, the object-oriented thing. Um, or the replacement of object-oriented uh, programming in Go. So um, what you have here is a user-struct user, user struct 
which is a struct itself and you include it just in your struct if it doesn't have a name like here it's just a type um, then basically uh, all the members are accessible without any extra name in our user struct here so uh, we, we then can access our user or the members of user user in our user object like it would uh, be derived from that but uh, strictly speaking, it's not derived from that, um, it's composition. So you can use the members of user users uh, from our user struct, but you can't um, use our user struct as a user user. You can access this user user and then use it as user struct. So it's um, yeah, there's no polymorphic uh, inheritance and sometimes a little bit strange if you're coming from object-oriented programming, but um, it works pretty well. Um, what you see next is an image. It's a media image ref, which is um, the media library I've mentioned. So what we have here is a reference to an image in the media library and um, another field gender where you can see um, how, how options are defined so this is another go feature here um, for struct members you can add um, it's called tags it's simply uh, text and uh, you can use reflection to um, query this text. And what you see here is that um, I'm adding some meta informa information here for the model, um, but you can also use other namespaces here. So you can also add uh, information for your view, for instance. Um, some say that's a bad idea, mixing the view with the model, um, but if you just want to get stuff done and um, set an option like, um, if, you, if it should be enabled or disabled or visible or something like that, you can also do that with, that, with those tags and mixing model and view information just to get stuff done. Okay, um, yeah, here you see how um, the user of the current session is retrieved with GoStart. Um, as usual with Go, you see here uh, the result, so if the, oh, authenticate. Okay, um, we are at authentication, so um, this authenticator implements the um, authenticator interface by simply um, providing this uh, method here and yeah, here you see how to retrieve an object. And the result, the two result values, um, if the authentication was uh, successful and the error. And as usual in most Go code, you have very explicit uh, error handling. So um, you have this early out here. And yeah, you see that kind of code a lot in Go. and. Some people are complaining, they're saying I have to write so much uh, error handling code, but um, my experience has been that in no other uh, programming language I had so often those moments where you are coding for hours and then you start your program and it just works. And yeah, I, I used to uh, create a lot of typos, so um, I'm a little bit uh, biased uh, against dynamic languages because of that. 
just because I can't type. Um, okay, so um, few paths, nothing spectacular here. Um, what I have here is a utility function. Um, so that's also a design principle in uh, GoStart. Um, do as much as possible for the user. Um, what this function does is it creates um, a template, or it creates a view um, that renders a template that uses um, that combines those both uh, template files uh, with HTML5 boilerplate um, normal, uh, CSS normalization and it uses um, a specified uh, template context um, in this example it just uh, gets a color scheme that can be saved for the user so that's how you get dynamic content into your CSS if you want to. Um, so here's a static view. Um, again you can see those HTML uh, like functions like div. Um, if you want to repeat code you just create a function and return the view. So title bar here is not a uh, go start function, it's a function um, defined somewhere else in, in the example. And yeah, I think this kind of code is pretty readable, um, even better readable as than, than HTML or HTML combined with uh, template syntax. Sorry. Just yeah. Sure. Woohoo! You relieved pizza. Continue. Um, yeah, slight change of plan. Um, so the original idea was that this is an interactive workshop, so that we would work on a tutorial and uh, everyone gets his uh, website up and running. Uh, it doesn't seem that uh, too many people want to do this, so uh, just continue um, going through the tutorial and um, yeah, explain along maybe uh, more things about Go. Um, okay, so um, in the break someone has asked me um, how good uh, the garbage collector is because I said uh, it's, it doesn't work uh, with uh, or doesn't work good with 32 bits. It's uh, rock solid on uh, 64 bits, so can't remember that our server ever crashed or so it's running for months. Um, okay, so let's continue where we ended. So. Um, Here's an example for static views. So what you see here are those HTML elements um, directly as uh, Go objects, div and h3. Um, another question in the break wa uh, was if that uh, isn't if that's inefficient, uh, always creating uh, new objects. So uh, that depends if that code is within a dynamic view or if it's a static view. So usually you, you start just with a static view, it's just a view and uh, everything you do will be created once um, in the memory and um, stays there for all requests from um, all users. So it's uh, also not like that this is a script that uh, runs uh, uh, creates a server pro process that uh, creates objects and so on. Um, if you run your server, it's uh, static, it's in memory, and um, basically, if you don't use any dynamic view, everything is static. Um, there's also, for performance reason, a view wrapper 
uh, in GoStart where you can uh, cache uh, pages for a certain time. So that's ju usually just one line of code. Uh, can you mix cutting and then having content? Yeah, that's what I'm coming to now. So, yeah, so what I have here is also the famous printf function. So, um, what this does is pretty much the printf like you know it, but it outputs a view. <coughs> and yeah, I found that. Um, can you close the door? Yeah, usually I found that I'm using printf um, most of the time instead of templates because um, most of the stuff is doesn't need templates. So yeah, coming now to the dynamic stuff. So there are two ways how you can uh, create dynamic um, output. That is um, output that depends on uh, yeah, your database or an algorithm or whatever. Um, there's a dynamic view, uh, which is a function um, that just outputs a view. So um, this view then is um, temporarily integrated into the DOM and rendered. So this does create uh, objects on the heap and they have to get freed afterwards. And that could be a performance um, bottleneck, um, but uh, yeah, we haven't seen any performance problems with our real world application yet. I think we just need two million more users. Okay. Um, and of course you can also just render uh, the text you want to uh, write to your uh, response and for that um, you use a render view and that's again a function and here you don't return any view you just uh, use response printf or write a bi uh, binary buffer or whatever. Um, you can also see a feature here um, from the model side. So this here is an uh, iterator. Um, we get here our iterator for all users and then use a for loop um, that outputs um, what we get from Mongo to this object. So it will only uh, unmarshal uh, those fields uh, that are present in the object and discard everything else. So we can get a sub, um, sub area of, of the data set. And it loops until next returns false and after that we use the error to return any error if there was one. And here's a high level construct, um, a menu. So usually you do menus in HTML uh, as uh, HTML list with links in it and this menu does exactly that for you. So um, yeah, you define your classes because you always want to style that stuff. So it looks like a menu and create page links. And what you have here are variables that uh, hold um, the view uh, that you want to link. Um, here's a simple form um, to create a submit button. So no form content. So um, all you have to, to define is a form ID um, so that uh, you know that what you're getting from your post is uh, what you have defined here because you can have multiple forms per page. And then pretty much it's only a submit function. You call, um, 
is the same for a model. So what GoStart does, it creates a form automatically for a model that you pass in. So this is the simplest version where you have a user model object and use that user model object to create a form. And on submit, um, you just call this utility function which saves the model and redirects to the view here. And yeah, this here is a full fledged form. Um, it's for changing a password, and what you see here is um, you have the elements of uh, get model, which is a function that returns um, the model for that form. That creates a new struct with uh, an existing password, and um, we don't have to initialize the field for the new password. And on submit will be called with exactly that um, model, which is um, assigned and typecasted here. And yeah, what you're also seeing here is a feature I, I try to talk a little bit more about in general about Go. So what you're seeing here is the type of an empty interface. So um, this is a special case. Um, empty interface, as I said before, um, every type that has all the methods of an interface with the right calling convention um, can be used um, to implement that interface. And um, if you have an interface without any methods, um, every type uh, complies, to, uh, complies to that um, convention. So this uh, empty interface type is used as um, general purpose um, variable type um, we can uh, assign everything. And what we have here is this form model is this untyped interface and I'll cast it back to the password form model uh, type I've been using here. Okay, and yeah, so every model has a save method, a delete method, the usual stuff you would expect. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope the second round of pizza is coming. Um, for everyone who wants um, to get his hands dirty and do some coding with this uh, tutorial, um, you could try get it running on the machine. So, any further questions? No? Okay, thank you.